It's time to look at some incredibly dynamic color combinations that you can incorporate into your home this year. 2022 is proving to be a time of new beginnings, new ideas, and creativity. And as interior designers have started to drift away from off-whites and neutrals and migrate towards more dynamic color saturation, it gives us all a wonderful opportunity to start experimenting with paint colors again. And I can tell you for free that I love colors. Being a paint and decorating channel Channel, the best way I can attempt to inspire you is to provide you with five pairs of paint colors that are very different from one another, but seem to go together so beautifully. You can use these as paint colors or just the colors by themselves in a more broad sense that you can incorporate in any way you see fit. Heck, even the graphic designers that might be watching could find some use out of these. All five of these color pairings are by Benjamin Moore, and each pairing also includes one of their newer CSP colors that were released not too long ago. The first color pairing I'm going to talk about is beige and pink. The reason I enjoy this pairing specifically is because of its juxtaposition from safe to sassy. But the nice thing is the beige is a little more than safe, and the pink is fairly sophisticated considering its sassiness, I guess. The first color is called First Crush, and it sort of feels like it might be pinky, but it's actually the beige color in this case. What's remarkable about these CSP colors is that they all contain many different colorants that come together to formulate a very nuanced color. A lot of the older colors that exist may have two or three colorants at most, but CSP colors have five, six, sometimes seven. No matter how straightforward First Crush seems at first glance, there is a little more under the surface, and that's why I like it. It almost has a very faint peachy quality to it, combined with a gentle dose of red and brown, which gives it a subtle connection to the pink color that I've paired with it, and that's called Pink Ribbon. It's one of the older Benjamin Moore paint colors being part of the Classics collection. What's interesting about this pink is its bit of added depth. It's not quite a bright, light, bubblegum pink necessarily, although it still has that fun-loving spirit to it. It's also fairly dark for a pink, and its little bit of gray almost gives it a slight cool purple undertone to differentiate itself from First Crush even more. The way you use them will drastically change the feel of your space, where if you lean into First Crush as the main color, the little pops of pink ribbon will feel more calculated and intentional. On the other hand, whenever you use a vibrant pink on your walls, that's what the room's gonna be about. So it's going to draw a lot of attention, but that could be exactly what you're going for. Have fun with these two. The next pairing is based on green and brown, which is a very prominent color pairing that you see in nature, like green moss on brown tree bark or brown soil underneath green leaves. From an interior design perspective, we're seeing a big re-emergence of those warmer gray greens or sage greens. I definitely had this in mind when I picked sage brush as the green in this color pairing. It's also the CSP color of the two, meaning it does come with its complexities. It appears to have some yellow warmth in the undertones, but at the same time, it almost feels minty fresh in a way. Really interesting midtone that can very much add some lovely character to a space. The brown that I wanted to go with is a deep rustic chocolate, and it's called Auberge. Auberge. Oh man, these pronunciations. <laughs> Anyway, it sits in a sweet spot for me where it's nearly 10 LRV helps it feel really dark and dramatic, but not enough so where you lose that rich warm brown coloration. The two colors together do feel a little complementary, and that's because the undertones are fundamentally different. Sage brush is based in green, while the brown has a little bit of a red undertone present that is complementing the other color. I don't know about you, but I love compliments and a press of the like button. Our next couple color pairings are going to feel even more vibrant. They're gonna rub some people the wrong way. They may not be for everyone is what I'm trying to say, but I've always been a huge fan of red and black as a color pairing. It's a large part of the reason that I named a red and a black for our Paint People Colors of the Year in 2022, just because I cannot get enough of that combination both in and outside of the home. I used to always preach about the Benjamin Moore color called Caliente, which was my favorite red for the longest time, but I think it might have been dethroned by a CSP color called Flamenco. 
Compared to Caliente, Flamenco has a bit less of that sun-dried tomato red and more of an energetic ruby color that pops off of black even better. It's also a tad lighter, which adds to its energetic quality, which is no surprise because it's named after a very energetic dance style that, uh, believe it or not, I'm not very familiar with. I don't really have that Latin heat. I'm just a boring Canadian. But an arguably boring color is the perfect pairing in this case. I chose Universal Black to go with Flamenco because it's a no-nonsense shade of black that doesn't have any strong undertones pulling at one way or the other. It will appear a bit cooler inside of your home, but that just further accentuates the fire in Flamenco. The black you decide to go with is going to be personal preference, but Universal Black is the one that I liked most in this situation. Moving on to Light Blue and Magenta. Not necessarily a combination you immediately think of in the interior design world, but I really love the interaction of these two. You could argue that there is a distant relation between them because I guess magenta tends to feel a tad cooler than a bright pink or red, but in practicality, they are extremely distinguishable from one another. The new CSP color in this case happens to go to Intuition, which happens to be the light powdery blue of this color pairing. It sort of resembles a robin's egg, where at times you may see just a tiny hint of yellow warmth, but really it's all about that light blue that you would see on a cloud covered sky. I don't mean those big fluffy white clouds, just the really kind of subtle feathery ones. I think they're called cirrus clouds, but uh, I could be wrong. The magenta to pop off that color is crushed berries, which is an intense blend of red, pink, and purple. This, more than any color pairing so far, really has that contemporary pop of color that is starting to reemerge into our homes. A color like this was only justifiable in maybe trendy businesses rather than inside your house. But there is this increase in more heavily saturated colors present in the home and I'm here for it. Let me know if you're here for it too, or you're just here for me. This last color pairing, I want to reveal to you one by one because it's probably the most unexpected of the bunch and that's what makes it feel so exciting. We start with a new CSP color called Hidden Sapphire, which is a deeply rich navy blue with a 6.21, I think, LRV. Let's just say six-ish. That's nearly as dark as some of the black paint colors that Benjamin Moore offers, but this one is far from that. In practicality, it's a deeply saturated blue with a small hint of yellow warmth, but not enough to make it feel remotely teal, which can sometimes happen. It's absolutely stunning, and in most cases would be the show-stopping standout color of whatever space it's used in. That is, unless you pair it with a zesty lime green called Margarita. Holy smokes, <laughs> that color pairing just leaps off the screen, doesn't it? It's interesting in a few ways, because thinking about the color hues themselves, green and blue, they're actually pretty similar, or at least adjacent, which means they coordinate a bit easier. But the complete and utter difference in vibrancy causes these two to really stand out from one another. Margarita makes Hidden Sapphire feel more sophisticated and almost passive, and the Lime Green injects such an aggressive amount of joy and energy, creating this fascinating mix of prestige and playfulness. I need to know, which color pairing did you like most? Because it'll really help me put together my next couple of sets.